morning. Uh, usually I have everything outlined. Usually I have a sermon prepared. Uh, this morning I've just got a message. I, 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 I don't have an outline. I don't have a whole lot, but just a thought that I'm going to try to drive home this morning. It came from a conversation that I had earlier this week with someone. I was talking to someone and, and, and from the Sunday school lesson where we were dealing about contending for the faith. Uh, and I want to kind of deal with that thought, but do keep your Bibles handy and start with, uh, with me. And uh, uh, we'll start in Isaiah 59, if you'll turn there. Hold your place there and turn to Revelations chapter 3. So it, it'll be Isaiah 59 with Revelations chapter 3. Give you a chance to get there. Revelations. All right. Not sure exactly how I'm going to start this. We'll start, let's start in Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, look at verse 12. The Bible says, For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. We know where we fall short. We know what we do wrong. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. We're living in a day of falsehood. Amen? Yeah. You can't find any truth on TV anymore. You can't find it in the news, uh, radio. And, and sad to say, you can't find it in some pulpits right. today. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 14, And judgment is turned away backwards. You can't find justice today either. And justice standeth afar off. Here it is. For truth is fallen in the street. And equity cannot enter. Truth has fallen in the street. Boy, if that does not describe the time period in which we live, I don't know what does. Truth has fallen in the street. Now in Revelations chapter 3, if you look over there with me, Revelation chapter 3, you're very familiar with this section of Scripture, I'm sure. It's the seven churches mentioned in Revelations. And the seven churches is a picture of the whole of Christendom. We see in those seven churches what the whole of Christendom will go through. From Calvary to the rapture of the church, you can just lay them out in order and you can see the history of the church. And we are, we are in the last time right before the Lord comes back. And the last church mentioned in, in Revelations chapter 2 and 3 is the church at Laodicea. We are in that church period. Yep. Now let's look what it says about this church in Laodicea. Look at verse 15 for time's sake. We'll not read it all. But verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would, I, I, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Here, according to the word of God, God knows our works and he knows that we are not on fire for him. We are not... We're not cold. We're not dead. We haven't just quit altogether. We, we still think about Him sometimes. We still bow our head asking to bless our food. We still, we still might come to church some, but we don't witness like we should. We don't pray like we should. We don't give Him our life like we should. Something is missing. And we know it, but we do nothing about it. We're cold. We're almost frosted over some of us. But he says we're lukewarm. He says because you're not cold, you're not plumb out, you haven't just quit, you haven't froze up and quit altogether on me. You're just lukewarm. You know, I, I, I'm not a big milk drinker. I, I'm not a fan of milk. I, I mean, that belongs to a cow. 
Yeah. I mean, if he wants to feed his calf, that's fine, fine with me. That's right. Let the calf have all he wants. Calf have all he wants of it. Amen. But but I'm not big on milk. That's just not my thing. But if I was going to drink it, it better be cold. I don't want no lukewarm milk. Nope, 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 nope. I don't, I don't like that. If it's supposed to be hot, I want it hot. I want my coffee hot. I want my soup hot. Yeah, amen. If it's supposed to be cold, iced tea. Northerners, listen. Iced tea, amen. amen. Yep. We started that in a Boston tea party. We threw it in the water and found out it's better cold. And we've been drinking that way ever since. <laughs> amen. England can have their hot tea. We need <coughs> iced tea. Amen. But imagine just getting a mouthful of something you expect it to be cold and it's lukewarm or you expect it to be hot. He says, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I think when God looks at the church today, it makes him sick. I think it makes him sick. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Oh boy, there's America. I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. I don't need God. I don't what what do I need God for? I've got my 401k. I've got my bank account. I've got this. I've got that. I've got my health. I don't need God. But ain't it funny? They the old saying there are no atheists in foxholes. Yep. When trouble comes and heartaches come and the uh, the test results come back or the phone call comes in and they'll call you back down to the doctor's office. It's funny. Then you'll cry out to him. That's right. Amen. Then you'll cry out to him. In need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. That's a description of us. We're living in a day and age where our politicians are no longer statesmen. There was a time when men sacrificed their time and their talents and went to Washington, our capital, to serve their country. They would walk away from their family and their businesses and their farms and go and serve for a short term and then would return to their farm and pick up their shovels and their pitchforks and go back to work for their family. Now they go to Washington to enrich themselves and their family. We've got a bunch of liars today in our politicians. Even our public media, they're no more than, than political activists. I mean, you can't trust the news anymore. They've turned into political activists. I don't care what channel you watch. I don't care what which side you lean, blue or red. You, you watch Fox News, One American News Now, Newsmax, they lean right. You watch CBS, NBC, ABC, they lean left. Now we're living in a day and age where we can seek and heap to ourselves teachers having itching ears. We can hear what we want to hear. We tune in what we want to hear. We're not looking for the truth. No one's given the truth except for every now and then you'll find a preacher that's got a little backbone still yet. But for the most part, it's all political. All political. Preachers today... I said politicians are liars. Our public media, they're, they're, they're nothing more than, than activists today. And, and sad to say, our preachers are ignorant and cowards. They're ignorant of the Word of God. They won't preach it if they do know it because they're afraid of offending somebody. And we're living in a day and age where Christians are so thin-skinned, the, I mean, seriously... I, I mean, growing up, I knew sissies tougher than some of the Christians today. I'm not kidding you. People get offended so easily today. Good night. I thought you was a man. There, there's, there's some men in here uh, that, that worked in the four place, and we got three of them in here today. And I, 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 I'm not meaning to embarrass him at all, but I, I love this brother, and I'm glad that he's here with me. But man, we was rough on each other sometimes. We pick on each other. He gave me the best comeback I ever heard. We was having a discussion one time, and he said, "The only gaps between your ears." Talking about me, and I thought, "Whoo!" I liked it. Had a good time. Amen. We 
we we were men, amen. We didn't get offended. We didn't get our feelings hurt. We could, we could have discussions or disagreements or or sometimes we jump on the other side of the fence just so we could argue, yeah. Yeah. amen. <laughs> Boy, nowadays nowadays they will not tolerate intolerance. <laughs> Ain't that funny? That very saying is intolerant. We will, not in, we will not tolerate any intolerance. That's intolerance. That very statement. How stupid this world has got. Our young preachers and kids go off to school and they come back worse than infidels. Yep. Amen. Right. Our political system's messed up. Yep. Yep. Our religious system's messed up. Yes. Right. Our education system's messed up. Our, right. our entertainment is messed up. I know preachers that left preaching, thus saith the Lord. Young preachers don't fire for God. Believe the King James Bible is the word of God. They get up excited and preach, thus saith the Lord. And they're so excited they want to learn the Bible. They go off to school so they can learn what saith the Lord. And they get in school and after four years of, yea, hath God said... Yeah. They come back doubting the Word of God. They come back doubting their own salvation. They come back instead of preaching, thus saith the Lord, quoting commentaries. A better rendering would be, in the original Greek it says, dead, lifeless, and useless. Poor, wretched, blind. Amen. That's the day in which we live. Right. Turn to Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Oh, I thought you keep your Bible handy. Just as the Lord kind of gives me a thought or two here, I'm just going to chase it this morning. We're just going to preach for a little bit. Amen. I, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. A better prepared preacher is better than a it is better than a best the best prepared sermon. The problem is we got a bunch of talent today. We got a bunch of young men that are skilled and are great orators and they can they they can they can go through and they can alliterate, they can have their points and their sub points, but they ain't they ain't got a relationship with the Lord. They don't have anything inside them, they don't have a love for the Lord or a desire for the Lord. They're doing it for a paycheck. It's a profession to them. They're not doing it for the souls of men. Right. That's what's going on today. Look at this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Most of you already know where I'm going as soon as I said that. I'll give you the context. Look at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him. There's the context. The second coming. Amen. Look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. That day, what day? His coming shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The church is going to be called out. The tribulation will start. And then the Antichrist will be revealed. Amen? Yeah. Joe Biden is not the Antichrist. <laughs> Donald Trump was not the Antichrist. Amen? It doesn't matter what president gets in. There's always somebody going to call him the Antichrist and give you ten verses why they believe he's the Antichrist. We are not going to know who it is. We're leaving here. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm not told to look for the Antichrist. I'm told to look for him. I'm looking for Jesus, amen? I'm looking for my Savior to step out on a cloud and call me home. And you know what? Today would be a good day. Amen. Boy, I tell you what. I, I like it. I'll be out there on the tractor. I'll be out there sometimes messing around and, and doing something and, and, and see a cloud coming up and think, Lord, that would be a good one to get on. <laughs> just, 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 just go ahead and call me on that one. I'll be, be fine with me. Amen. But notice what it said. There shall be a falling away first. Yep. Before he comes. Yep. Before the tribulation. Before the Antichrist, there's going to be a falling away. Who's he talking about? What's he talking about? He's talking about the church. He's talking about Christians. Before the Lord comes back, 
There's going to be a falling away. Every dispensation ends in apostasy. Amen. And the church age, the dispensation of grace will be no different. Yeah. The time period in which we live will end in apostasy. When Jesus came, they marveled at His doctrine. They refused Him. They denied Him. And they crucified Him. Before, when Jesus came the first time, the religious leaders are the ones that did that. Before He comes back the second time, there's going to be a falling away. Who do you think is going to do that? It will be the religious crowd. The religious crowd rejected Jesus. The religious crowd rejected His teaching. The religious crowd did not want any part of the Word of God. And you know, there's some of them still like that today. Right. You go over there in uh, Israel, I talked to a Jewish, Jewish missionary this week, and was talking to him, and he said he stood there, he got up on a place where he could overlook, and there in Tel Aviv, there's something going on, he said almost a million people, a sea of people standing in front of him. And he looked over, and he almost broke my heart talking about it, just seeing all those people Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people gathered together. God's people. Israel. And they reject Jesus Christ. The majority of them are going to die lost and go to hell. The Bible says, and we'll get, we'll get there on Wednesday nights, but it says in Romans chapter 11 that blindness in part has happened to them to the fullness of the time of the Gentiles become in. Yeah. Yeah. They're blinded. Just like they are blinded to the truth of the gospel, the church is going to be blinded to what it's doing. We're falling away. We're not where we used to be. How many of you, how many of you remember hearing stories about revivals and people running the aisles and shouting and hooting and hollering and people walking the aisles and getting saved? Seeing, seeing, seeing some old deadbeat dad that won't do anything for his family, won't support his family, just old drunk, waste his money on booze or drugs, come down and hit an altar and cry out and get saved and cleaned up and go home and be a good dad and be a good father, be a good example. Yes. Boy, you used to hear those stories. You don't see them now, do you? What's happened? I'll tell you why. We're living to see that falling away. I do not believe that COVID is the mark of the beast, nor the vaccine. I don't believe it's the mark of the beast. I believe it's setting the stage for it. Yeah, right. I believe it's a good, it's a good uh, 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 run to see how to control people to get them to do so. I do believe that, that you can be used for that. No doubt about that in my mind. But we are living in a day and age where people are falling away. Let me... Let me just move on. I just jotted a few thoughts down. One of the things that's associated with the last days is a doctrine. Turn over to Timothy. You're there just, just a little ways. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, yep. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, it said in the last days, the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Yes. We're seeing that now. And I can tell you what age group it is. Now we're blessed. We've got a lot of young people. You see our choir, our choir looks young. We had a missionary come through a while back, come visit him with us. And the choir got up and sang and, and he was just amazed and said we got one of the youngest choirs that he'd seen in a long time. But you know, we are missing a group in here. We're missing a group of young people. We, see, we keep them up to about 17, 18 years old. They start working and everything. We do everything we can for them. We pray for them. We, we, we work with them. We do everything that we can. Mom and Dad's faithful in bringing them. And, 
and, and praying for them. We got Sunday school teachers that are teaching them and praying for them. They got a pastor that loves them and is praying for them and seeking messages to help them. But as soon as they get that job or as soon as they get that boyfriend or that girlfriend, as soon as they taste a little bit of freedom, they step out of mom and dad's house, they're gone. That's right. Yeah. Didn't used to be that way. That's right. Didn't used to be that way. Used to be they had enough love and respect. They had enough character. See, we're losing that. We're losing that. Today there is no morals. Today there is no character. Today there is no final authority. Your truth is not my truth. All truth is relevant. That's what they teach in school. Well, I'm here to tell you there is such thing as absolute truth. It's called the King James Bible, the Word of God. It is the standard. It is the foundation upon which you better build your life, your marriage, your home on. That's what it ought to be built on. Anything short of that, you're just asking for trouble. But we're missing that young group. They go off, they get married, they, they, they go out into the world... And they struggle a lot of times. And they go through life and they spend time trying to raise a family and stuff. And then their kids go astray and they get heartbroken. And then they get to remembering the lessons of their youth and how their mom and dad prayed for them. And then they turn to the Lord and then they seek after Him. But then the kids is gone. The world's done got a hold of them and they say, Preach our with them. You should have had them in here. It's not always easy to win them when they're gone. We're living in a time of apostasy. We're living in a time where they will seek to themselves. Teachers have an itch in ears. They're looking for the Joe Osteens. They want, to hear, they want to hear, oh, you're so good. You're such a good Christian. You can have your best life now. If this is your best life, you're going to hell. Because this is going to be my worst. Amen. Amen. Down here, I'm going to suffer heartache and pain. Down here, I'm going to suffer betrayals and, and, and lies. Down here, I'm going to face sickness and, and death. This is not going to be my best life. My best life is when I get to be with Him. Amen. A glorified body fashioned like into His glorified body. Amen. Eternal life. Ruling and reigning with the one that loved me enough to die for me. That's good stuff when you get a hold of that. Let's go to another place here. Turn over to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Here's a verse for some of you men. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Some of you men, I say that. I say that, oh, I'm trying to see how to word this without offending some of you sissies. <laughs> this is what we ought to be, men. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Look at this. It's chapter 2, verse 3. Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know, when, you're, when you get saved... God has put you in His army. Amen. We talked a little bit about that being a soldier this morning. In Ephesians, it describes the armor we are to put on. It likens the Christian life to warfare. This is not supposed to be a life of all pleasure and roses. <coughs> this is a, where we are to struggle and contend for the faith. This is where we grow. This is where we mature as Christians, as servants, as soldiers. Amen. Do you, could you imagine going to the army and, 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 using, and hearing all the excuses that people use? Could you imagine taking, taking the excuse you use for not reading your Bible or not praying or, or not going to church or not going soul winning? Could you imagine giving your drill sergeant that excuse? Well, well it was raining and I didn't want to get the car wet. <laughs> I just washed the car last week. I, 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 just, I just polished my boots so I didn't want to get them dirty. You know, it, it was cold this morning. So I didn't come to, you know, to train. Are you with me? Could you imagine? Boy, we're some pitiful soldiers, ain't we? Pitiful soldiers. 
Oh, my soul. But let's keep going here. Look at this, chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Boy, that's it, ain't it? Oh, right. Do you love anybody more than you love yourself? Not many do today, it don't seem like. They put their self above everybody else. That's why we have such a divorce rate. That's why we have such fussing and fighting in families. That's why we have people's feelings hurt. That's why friends turn their back on other friends. Because what they feel, what they like is more important than anything else and anybody else. Yeah, right. Amen. Nobody sacrifices. Nobody does without. Nobody puts anyone else first. It's all about me. The number one picture in the United States is the selfie. Amen. The iPad, the me pad. Amen. Everybody putting everything on Facebook. Like I said before, I don't care if you went shopping. I could care less what you have for supper. I got things to do. I'm not sitting around there just reading your life. But some people, they think that they're that important. People really care what I ate today and what time I got up and where I'm going. Yeah. Really? Let's keep going. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. Oh, yeah. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, boy, I could camp right there, couldn't I? Disobedient to parents. That was a time that kids would listen to their parents even when they was grown. Now, you know what you hear? Boy, just as soon as I turn 18. Boy, I can't wait till I turn 18. As soon as I turn 18, as soon as I'm legal, I'm out of here. Why? Because they have no respect. That's right. No character. Now listen, Mom and Dad, I'm not being mean. I'm not being ugly. A lot of it is the time in which we live, but a lot of it's you too. Right. We have got to the place to where we have spoiled our children. Jesus, at the age of 12, went into the temple his parents had left him by mistake. I said his parents, his mom and his stepdad, left him by mistake behind, right? And, and he found his way to the temple, and they three days later come back and find him. He's talking to the lawyers, asking them questions, and they're astonished because, man, what kind of questions could you imagine Jesus asked? Well, what do you think about this? And they said, well, actually, and then he quotes Scripture to them. Could you? I would have loved to be a fly on the wall and see what Jesus was saying to them. Amen. Could you imagine that conversation? A 12-year-old boy correcting the doctors and lawyers of the day. But they left him there at 12 years old for three days. He was able to feed himself. He was able to take care of himself. He was able to provide for himself. We don't expect that of our 18-year-olds. That's right. <laughs> We failed! We failed in that area. When we got a kid, we should be training that kid on how to be on, stand on their own feet, how to provide for themselves, how to do right, how to instill in them the character to seek God as help. Amen? Not to say, Mama, what's for supper? You're 25 years old. Don't you think it's about time you figured out how to fix supper? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to say something that's going to sound awful, but some of you men need to go home and break the plate. Let that sorry rascal go hungry for a little while. Tell him to get off the video game and mow the stinking yard. Amen. Get the trash out. Well, I make him clean up the room. He sleeps in it. He ought to clean it up. But you ought to give them something else to do so they'll learn character. That's right. Amen. 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 Mama, Papa Tita. Right. Amen. You say, preach that's awful. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it is. They're grown. Quit it. Amen. Quit babying them. Quit treating them like they're a child. That's what's wrong with them. That and the victim society, everybody's a victim nowadays. Unthankful. Oh my. That one follows you into adulthood. <coughs> that one follows you. People get to where they expect to be given stuff. If somebody gives you something, you ought to be grateful. You ought to be thankful. You didn't deserve it. Amen. 
I don't deserve anything but hell. Yeah. Uh -huh. Little Jimmy steps out enough, amen. You know, that guy wonders whether or not he's even saved. Amen. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. There's your queers and faggots and your moms that can throw babies into dumpsters. That's right. yep. yeah. mm -hmm. Without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of them that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I could camp out on each and every one of them. But the last one describes this best. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, I can tell you how to fill this church up. Here in just a couple weeks, I could advertise. I'm bringing a big screen TV. I'm going to have popcorn and chips and soft drinks. And we're going to watch the Super Bowl together. I can pack this church out. Free drinks and hot dogs and big screen TV. But you let me get up here and say, we're going to have a revival. And if you'll bring your lost family and your friends, we'll try to win them with Jesus Christ, and you'll hear crickets in here. That's right. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we're lovers of pleasure. We won't entertain. Right. Entertain me, preacher. Entertain me, preacher. You know, I'd, I'd come to Sunday school, but you know, that some of that doctrinal stuff, you know, that's just a little hard. I'd come to Wednesday night, but that, some of that doctrinal stuff is just a little just a little over my head. You know why it's over your head? Because you never come to catch up. Amen. Say, preacher, you're being mean this morning. No, I'm just being honest. That's the days we're living in. We're living in the days where they turn away, where they scoff and laugh. That's just old-fashioned preacher. That's just old-fashioned way. We, 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 we want to get be up to date. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. You're, you're, you're lining right up with the Scriptures now. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort, they are crept into houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. Verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's, That's right. the day in which we live. Amen. Man, you can do amazing things with these phones. Amazing things with these phones. Boy, look how technology has, has jumped. I can sit here and I, I can just push a button and I can see my beautiful granddaughter anytime I want to. Amen. I can just look at her. Hey, honey, how you doing? Ain't that good? Oh, it's amazing. Just carry around in your pocket, internet, whatever I want. Sir, I can look up any verse I want on the Bible. Oh, you can do all kinds of stuff on this phone. Man, we're ever learning. But what's happened to the truth? It's falling in the street. No one's listening. No one's picking it up and running with it. No one's contending for the faith. No one Seems to be doing what they ought to be doing. <coughs> We're just slowly watching the apostasy set in. We're slowly watching the church drift away. There was a time when there was a gap between the world and the church. And nowadays you can't tell a difference. Amen. You can't tell a difference. You go into Walmart on Sundays, you used to see the difference between the church ground now and, and the others. Now you can't. You used to talk to somebody and you could tell from their speech, hey, they must be a Christian. Why? Their, their speech was different. They wasn't foul mouth. They wasn't always cussing and carrying on. They, they were different. Now you can't tell the difference. There's a falling away. We're living in a day also where they will not endure sound doctrine. They get mad and leave if you preach the truth. They do. They get mad and leave if you preach the truth. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what you think. Amen. I don't care what you believe. Amen. I don't care what you've been taught. I could care less what your grandmother said. What saith the Scripture? That's, right. yeah. That's what should matter. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What does God say about the subject? 
What does the Word of God have to say? Let's get in this book and find it. Let's find the context. Let's get all the verses on the subject and let's follow the book. Let's believe the book. Let's stand on the book. Let's defend the book. Amen. 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 That's right. But today, nobody wants to do that. It's so much easier just to blend in and compromise. It's so much easier rather than stand up and fight the perverts, rather than stand up and be ridiculed and scoffed and mocked. It's so much easier just to blend in. You know, we're living in a day and age where a lot of the doctrines that once were commonly taught, you rarely hear anymore. Yeah. When's the last time you heard a good message on the incarnation? When's the other than at Christmas time? Then it's just part of the Christmas story. Now they're just putting on the show. You come here, you know what? You might get a message on hell come Christmas. I don't know. I'm preaching whatever the Lord lays on my heart. I don't run a calendar and make sure that I preach lovey-dovey stuff on Valentine's or, 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 or anything. On, I don't do that. I just preach whatever the Lord lays on my heart whenever. Amen? Amen. How about the virgin birth? It's again the way you don't hear a whole lot about the blood atonement, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're right. See, we've grown past the bloody, old bloody religion. I still like singing about it. Uh, preacher, that, 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 that's just old and archaic. And like I say, how come they didn't mix with, mess with Shakespeare? How come they can't stand it in this? See, it ain't the book. It's the author of the book they don't like. It ain't the wording. It's the author they're trying to get rid of. You don't hear a whole lot of messages anymore on the literal, visible, physical, political return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. Amen. He's coming back literally Amen. to this earth and He's going to take over. Yes, Amen. He's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. You just don't hear a whole lot about that anymore, do you? Oh, we hear a lot about eternal security. We hear a lot about God loves you. But how about God is a God of wrath? Yes. A God of war. Yeah. Is, you're going to stand before Him in judgment one day and give Him account. Yes, sir. When's the last time you heard of that? When's the last time you heard a good message on the judgment seat of Christ? Yeah. Christian, you're going to stand and give an account of how you live. And what you've done for him since he saved you. That's right. Yep. Everything before then is under the blood. Amen. But since you got saved, what have you done for him? What have you done for him? We may be in the last days, but you don't have to be a Laodicean Christian. We don't have to be a Laodicean church. That's right. We can be a church on fire for God. We can be a little light in, in this dark world. Amen. We can get God to bless us. We can search for the truth. We can defend the faith. We can get our children in. We can get our loved ones in. We can try to get them in and get them led to the Lord and get them growing. Amen. We can do that. Because this world's not going to get any better. And here's the thing. God didn't call us to make this world better. Some people are so caught up in this world and so caught up with, with politics or so caught up with this. Listen, I know it's important that we vote the right way. But my hope's not in the government. I'm not looking for the government to solve my problems. I know the Bible says there's going to be a falling away. I know this dispensation is going to end in apostasy. And when I see that, I almost get excited. You say, preacher, are you old enough? Yeah, yeah, I kind of do. Because that means he's closer to coming. I don't want my kids to grow up in this. I don't want to see my kids grow up in this. I want them to grow up and see what I saw and see what I heard about before I got in. Amen? But the truth of the matter is, there's going to be a falling away. Yeah. And you better get them in now because it's only going to get worse. You got loved ones you want to see saved? You better start witnessing now. Amen? You got children you want to see right? You better start 
keeping them faithful in now. Get them in the Sunday school classes. Let the Sunday school teachers work on them. Get them in here. Let Brother Ryan preach to them. Keep them in here. Let me help them when they get a little older. Amen? Blindness. The cloud of blindness and ignorance is sweeping our country right now and the world. The lady in church was blind. And blind was one of the descriptions. That's not physical blindness. That's spiritual blindness. People are blinded to where they actually stand. Church, I can't encourage you enough To get off somewhere, now listen, there's nothing in this world more important. I'm closing here, I'm closing here. There's nothing more important in this world than your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. More important than church membership. More important than anything is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have one? Would you like one? Yes. Do you have one? What is he saying to you? Amen. If you've got a personal relationship with him, you ought to know his will for your life. Yes. Or you ought to be sensing his will for your life. The most important thing in your life, individually, is your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as a couple, married as a family, I can tell you what the most important thing in the family life is. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A family altar. Time that you Amen. pray together. You say, well, my kids is grown. They're out of the house. You still ought to pray together. Amen. To keep everything strong. Amen. I want to encourage you not to be a Laodicean Christian. Amen. I'm going to ask you about you and close your eyes. I know that was very, very, very different for me. Not my normal 